Chapter 32 With a shrill scream, Slappy blinked open his eyes. He sat up with a jerk. His body trembled. His wooden jaws chattered. He blinked several more times as the harsh light invaded his eyes. I'm dead, he thought. Is this what it's like? The room came into focus. A familiar room. He recognized the chair, the dressing table with its dust-smeared mirror, the metal chest resting open against the cracked plaster wall. The dressing room? Slappy's mouth dropped open. Am I back in the theater dressing room? Jimmy O. James shimmered into view, leaning over him. Slappy? Slappy stared up at him, speechless once. Slappy, are you okay? Jimmy asked. What's wrong with you? Why were you twitching like that? You kept crying out in your sleep. Slappy blinked again. I... I suppose I was having a nightmare. Jimmy sniggered. A dummy having a nightmare? He muttered. That's a good one. He frowned down at Slappy. Knowing your evil mind, it must have been a nasty nightmare. It... it was! Slappy stammered. It was my worst nightmare. I dreamed I had to do three good deeds. Jimmy shook his head. You must have been horrified. Listen, you and I have to talk. But Slappy didn't hear him. The dummy had jumped to his feet and was doing a joyful dance across the dressing room floor. I'm alive, he cried. I'm alive. He danced and twirled and clapped his hands gleefully above his head. All a dream. I'm alive! Slappy lives! Slappy lives! Slappy? Jimmy stepped in front of him to stop the dance. Did you hear me? You and I have to talk. Slappy dropped onto the edge of a trunk and tilted his head up at Jimmy. What about, creep face? I can't perform with you anymore, the ventriloquist said, crossing his arms in front of him from his chest. I can't let you hurt any more kids. You are too evil. You cannot perform again. Slappy tossed back his head in a cruel laugh. <laughs> what choice do you have, Jimmy boy? I'm all you've got. No, you're finished. You are history, Slappy, Jimmy insisted. The dummy jumped to his feet. You know what? I'm not taking any more lip from you. I'm going to run the show from now on. I'm putting you out the pasture. You've outlived your usefulness. I'm the act, not you. I... Slappy was interrupted by a loud knock on the dressing room door. A man in a brown uniform dragged in a large pinewood crate. Who are we for you, Mr. James? Jimmy thanked him and bent down to open the crate. Slappy laughed. <laughs> How wonderful. Just the right size for your coffin, Jimmy. What good timing. Jimmy ignored him. I wonder who sent me this, he muttered. He prized open the lid. Whoa! The inside of the crate was lined with purple velvet. Stretched out on the bottom was a ventriloquist dummy. It's your identical twin, Jimmy declared, scratching his head in amazement. Can you believe it? Slappy didn't reply. Jimmy reached down by the dummy's feet and pulled out a stack of yellow papers. He examined him quickly. When he turned to Slappy, he had a wide grin on his face. Guess what, Slappy? Sometimes nightmares come true. Jimmy lowered his eyes to the page and quickly began to read the curse.